Hello everybody and welcome back to the second shelf. Um, a week from now it's November and that means non-fiction November. If you haven't heard of that, that's uh, a month-long uh, read-along uh, that Olive over at the book Olive and Gemma from Nonfic Book organize every year in November in order to promote uh, the reading of non-fiction. Um, I will leave links to uh, Olive's announcement video down below and also uh, check out uh, Gemma's uh, channel if you are into nonfiction. It's really worthwhile because she exclusively talks about nonfiction. But anyway, so in November, uh, Olive and Gemma try to get all of us to read more nonfiction. Um, if you never read nonfiction, just try to read one book. If you read more nonfiction normally, try to read even more in November. And in order, oh yeah, and there's a Goodreads group also. Uh, I will leave a link to that uh, as well down below. If you participated in earlier years, you are automatically a member. But if this is your first year of Nonfiction November, uh, go check out the group and become a member. And there is also a Twitter account and Olive uh, will do uh, regular tweets, uh, but she will also do live chats. So you should watch her announcement videos because she explains everything there. And also uh, each year um, uh, Olive comes up uh, with a couple of challenges or prompts in order, you know, to give us some help to find a good nonfiction. And what I wanted to do is I'll take its four prompts, four challenges. I'll, I looked at the prompts and I looked at the books that are on my shelf uh, to be read, nonfiction books to be read, and tried to find four books um, that would fit the four challenges. The first, it, it's always two words in, in the challenge. You will, you will see because I will talk about them. And the first prompt or challenge is called past time or pastime. Um, so I tried to find a book that fits to both prompts and I chose this one uh, Philippa Langley together with uh, Michael Jones um, The King's Grave The Search for Richard III published in 2014 um, Philippa, Lang, um, uh, Philippa Langley is an, a Scottish screenwriter and historian um, and she um, is also part of the Richard the Third Society, uh, but I, I'll back up a little bit because I'm not sure whether everybody um, watching this is familiar with Richard the Third. Now he is probably the most notorious uh, of English kings. Uh, he died in 1485 after only two years of of reign uh, uh, on the battlefield. Um, uh, his body was lost after that quote-unquote lost, uh, but that's not what he's famous for. He's famous or infamous for the fact that he is um, a, a bad man. He supposedly killed um, uh, his two nephews, he killed his brother, I don't know how many people he was supposed to kill, um, and uh, the, you know, there's this famous Shakespeare play about Richard III, where he, he's portrayed as a hunchback uh, with evil, uh, a really evil. Um, I was always fascinated uh, by this uh, historical figure, and even more so after I read uh, a crime novel by Josephine Tay, uh, published in 1951. Uh, I read it a little bit later, I'm not that old, um, uh, called The Daughter of Time, in which her it's, it's one of her, in, in her, her series of an inspector, and in this particular book, the inspector uh, lies in the hospital, so he can't really do investigative work, uh, but he sees a portrait of, of Richard III, and then he tries to find out from his sickbed whether it's really true that Richard III killed his two nephews, the princes in the tower. Um, now, and after I read that book, I got even more fascinated uh, by this figure because it's, um, yeah, he's portrayed, he's portrayed so as, as such an evil person that you, I don't know, that you get suspicious, um, and the fact that his body was never found is even adds to the, you know, to the appeal. But anyway, so Philippa Langley is the person you might have heard of who actually discovered. Um, uh, Richard III's remains uh, in a parking lot. And this book uh, tells the story about the discovery, how she 
came about to discover it, then the excavation works um, and things like that. But she also asked uh, historian Michael Jones to contribute to the book and he tells us about uh, Richard III, his life and, you know, what he is supposed to have done. I had this book on my shelf for quite some time and I think it fits the prompt perfectly because it's about the past, so about past time, but it's also about Philippa Langley's pastime because she is a member of the uh, the Scottish uh, Richard III Society um, and in her pastime <laughs> she uh, works on Richard III and she did uh, find his body. So this is my pick for the first prompt. The second prompt is self shelf and I interpreted this um, prompt of these two words as a book from your shelf um, and in the book there has to be something about either the self of the author or yourself as the reader and I picked this one um, Alice Bolin I think I didn't check, I'm sorry, um, uh, Dead Girls, a, a collection of essays published in 2018, so quite recently, but it has been on my shelves. Um, and it's um, a book exploring the theme of, like the title says, Dead Girls, the American obsession. Alice Bolin is a, an American writer, non-fiction writer. Um, the obsession with uh, dead girls, uh, crimes uh, involving women, but it's also, um, um, the collection also tells us about Alice's life, about coming of age in Los Angeles, so it's about herself. Um, and I was, I, I thought the, the, the topic is fascinating. I, I read a lot of, of crime, first of all, uh, also true crime. I've been a criminal lawyer for a long time, although I, don't think I ever had a female um, body, so no murder with a female, I'm, I'm, I don't think so. But anyway, I, I'm fascinated uh, by this topic and I think the approach um, that the author chooses to, to explore why we are so obsessed um, uh, in, in you know in popular culture with uh, with the TV series or movies with dead bodies and especially uh, bodies of dead women. So the essay collection uh, Dead Girls is my pick for the second prompt self shelf. The third twin of prompts is wonder and wonder. I had to think about that uh, for a little bit going through my uh, TBR, non-fiction TBR, and I came up uh, with this book, Unthinkable by, let me, here, you can see the author a little bit better, no, like this, yeah, Helen Thompson, uh, Unthinkable, also published recently in 2018. Uh, Helen Thompson is a science writer and this book uh, is a collection of story ni stories, nine stories um, about people with extraordinary brains, uh, either um, uh, uh, after an accident or uh, because they have a p particular brain disorder or something else extraordinary happening in their brains or with their brains and she tells these nine stories. And I thought uh, the first... Uh, wonder is she wanders around in the brains of and we also as readers wander around in the brains of other people but it's also a wonder because the brain is um, not only an extraordinary organ but it's also we wonder a lot how the brain works because even the research um, as the research develops we know uh, very little how it actually works. Uh, and if you are following my channel for any length of time, you know that I'm fascinated uh, with brain research, uh, with brain science. Um, I read a lot of books about brains, popular science books about brains. So that's always a subject that has fascinated me. And I thought this one, you know, uh, uh, giving an overview, I bought this, I think, in the spring uh, and never got around to it, which is a shame. So this this prompt, this twin of prompts, Wonder Wonder, um, gives me a good opportunity to read this book, I hope. And yeah, I'm, I, I'm looking forward to this nine, these nine stories, uh, the journey into nine fascinating brains.
And the last prompt or duo prompt is micro macro, so the small and the big. And for this book, for this prompt, I picked this book, uh, Louise Gilder, The Age of Entanglement, published in 2008. Louise Gilder is a physicist, um, and the uh, Age of Entanglement deals with quantum quantum physics. And don't click away now because you think physics is boring, uh, because it's fascinating. Um, uh, quantum physics deals with the physics of the very, very small, so the tiny particles, electrons and quarks and, you know, the, the, the smallest particles that make up matter. Um, and uh, the, the problem is in quantum physics that there is something called entanglement. So particles can communicate, quote-unquote, with each other um, uh, over quite a long distance, and the communication is instantaneously uh, instantaneous so um, and that is a problem um, because if you are not familiar with physics you have at least heard of Einstein and relativity theory and that information from one entity to another has to travel uh, and the speed limit is the speed of light nothing can travel faster than the speed of light but obviously, with the very, very small, with the tiny particles making up matter, that is questionable, because if information from one particle to another um, is communicated uh, instantaneously, that would mean um, it would break, the travel of this information would break uh, the barrier, the speed limit barrier of the speed of life. And that can't be. So the Quantum physics uh, research, uh, although it deals with the tiny, with the micro, has implications for the very big, the macro. I think it's fascinating. And if you're still here, if you're still watching, maybe you think it's fascinating too. Anyway, so Louis Gilder tells us the story um, of quantum physics, how it came to be, what it means, what the research is, and it's not written for physicists. Um, so uh, I, I'm not a physicist either. I mean, you have to be interested in the topic, obviously, because otherwise it will bore you. But that's true for e every book you read, uh, whether it's nonfiction or fiction. But you don't have to um, know uh, physics or be a physicist in order to read it. I read, I think, 20 or 30 pages of this already, and then I put it down and forgot to pick it up. So I can tell you that it's written uh, very accessibly. So the only thing you need, really, is a fascination for um, the entanglement of those particles, or what, what Einstein called spooky action at a distance. So maybe this is also something for, you know, the autumn readathon when you have to read a spooky book. But I think it's a spooky novel. Anyway, so for the, the prompt micro macro, I picked up this book about quantum physics and entanglement. Uh, this was it for my nonfiction November. Uh, the books I, I will try to read in November fitting the prompts. Um, uh, thank you very much for watching. Let me know whether you um, want to participate in nonfiction November, whether you read nonfiction at all, um, and try to look at the prompts and maybe find books that interest you and to fit them into the prompts. Um, I, I'd love to hear uh, about this from you and I'll see you all soon in my next video. Bye-bye!